how do you know when you're running out of ink? One of my worst fears is running out of ink when I'm in the middle of a meeting or somewhere else when I'm taking notes. What are signs that the ink is low, especially when you can't see how full your pen is? Okay, so it's a very good question. I think if you're using fountain pens with any kind of regularity, this is a very common thing to have to deal with because you know, unlike a, a you know, ballpoint or roller ball, fountain pens need to be filled up you know, fairly often, you know, especially if you're using them a lot, especially if you're using them on cheap paper, like I just discussed in the last question, um, you end up having to deal with um, a, lot of, a lot of fills, whereas you might have to fill it every few days or maybe once a week, as opposed to who the heck knows, especially if you're using disposable you know, ballpoints or roller balls. I can guarantee you never get a thought how long one particular pen lasts you because you don't carry just one pen with you and use it, you know, it's just whatever is around. But once you start actually carrying and you invest in a really nice pen and you start carrying it around and using just that pen, you notice like, oh gosh, I really go through ink. Part of it is because you are actually going through ink a little bit more, but part of it too is you're actually using just one pen and not, you know, just grabbing whatever pen is closest to you and using a little bit here, a little bit there, and so on. Um, so that's part of it. It depends on the pen, for sure. Um, if it's truly running out, you know, if your ink is truly running dry, um, then it's going to show signs of starting to run dry. So you're going to, your line is going to get weaker, your, um, the color is going to get weaker, it's going to start to narrow in, the, in terms of its line width. Um, you might start to see a break in the flow, so it might start to break on, a couple, on you in a couple letters, or it might be, have a harder time starting. The one thing that I've seen, you know, more than a few people do when they get first into fountain pens, if they are given it as a gift or they don't really kind of know what they're getting into, they will not really think about having to clean or refill the pen. And um, they'll use the pen, you know, for whatever period of time. They don't, they're not really thinking about the fact they're using one pen consistently now instead of, you know, just whenever. Or the pen will dry, or they, they don't use it that often and the pen will dry out a little bit. And so they think, okay, so I need to just like scribble on it more or tap it or press on it more or whatever. And they end up bending their nib and kind of ruining it just trying to get more ink out of the pen when really if they just open up the pen they could see it needs more ink <laughs> you know that's a very common thing so yeah hopefully you're not in that situation just the fact that you're even asking me this question i'm assuming you're you're further along uh, in your ink ink pen journey than that but um that is something to be thinking about is how often do you need to be filling um, i don't think it's a bad idea especially if you're in a work situation to keep whatever ink that you are regularly using at your desk and I know technically if you want to consider, okay, UV exposure and stuff like that, you don't want to keep a bottle out. Yes, in the most purest of forms, that is true. However, if you're really using this for notes, you probably are more concerned about what you're actually writing down than you are about a couple of dollars worth of ink on your desk and maintaining its integrity a year from now with UV exposure. Like, I would just worry about whatever, if, like I'm a very visual person, personally, so I have ink stored all over the place because a lot of my ink I want to keep kind of for posterity, so I'll keep it aside. But whatever ink that I'm kind of actively using, like right now I have a bottle of, you know, Robert Oster Blue Water Ice, and I can say I've torn through like a fifth of the bottle in the last couple of days because every pen that I'm testing and every pen that I'm kind of trying out, this is the pen, this is the bottle that I have right here visibly on my desk. So it's very natural to me, and I'm looking at the ink level, and I'm like, oh, it's getting low and it's right there and it's top of mind and it's very convenient. So try to keep a bottle of ink out and that will remind you, oh yeah, I should fill my pen. Or if you're on hold with somebody and you're like, oh, you know what, let me fill my pen real quick, boom. If it's the same color, you don't have to clean it out, you don't have to do every, anything like that. You know, you wanna clean out maybe once a month or so, but if, you're, if it's just, you know, you wanna top it off, it can be very easy to do that in 15 to 20 seconds as you're on hold or, you know, oh, so-and-so, you wanna go out to lunch together? Oh, okay, you just gotta go grab your purse. Okay, cool. Let me just fill my pen real quick while you grab your purse. And, and then that, literally that's it. So as long as you can like think of it and keeping the bottle out can help you, you know, think of it top of mind. Um, uh, let's see here. What else? The specific pen. So it's going to It's gonna vary depending on the pen um, is what it is. Cartridge converter pens are pretty easy. You know, for example, got the Edison pens here. Um, any cartridge converter pen that you have uh, is, I can't think of a single one that doesn't have, well, okay, there are some converters like the Pilot, you know, Con 20, which is not even really a thing anymore. Um, but there's other, there's some converters out there that are not clear, but most converters you have are going to be clear. 
um, most of them. Now, with the exception, like the Pilot Metropolitan. So that one's fair. That one comes with a non-clear converter. So that would be one actually pretty popular pen that uh, is an example of something that isn't easy to tell when it is running low on ink. Um, but generally speaking, most cartridge converters, it's gonna be clear. And you can literally just kind of like open up the pen, take a peek, see, oh, it's getting low, and then you can fill it. Um, if you have something like a Metropolitan where you can't see inside of it, um, there's a couple of tricks that you can do. There's a couple of situations, you know, like this is one mechanism, you know, it's like a kind of an aerometric, um, you know, thing, it's basically got a little bladder here and you squeeze it and that's how you fill it. Now it can take, you know, a regular, you know, piston type converter that is clear, the Con 50 previously, now the Con 40 is kind of replacing it, so that would be it, the Con 40 is clear. So that fits on a, a Metropolitan, you can replace that if you happen to have this particular pen. Um, but if you're in a situation where you have some type of converter or some other type of mechanism where you, you can't see in any way inside, the one trick that I have um, that I use, which there is an element of risk involved, in doing this, um, if I don't want to actually just go and ink it back up, say I don't remember what color I have in here, I'm like, oh gosh, I don't remember what color it is, I know I'm going to need to clean it out, um, but I, I don't want to do that until I know if it's if it's uh, all used up or not. Um, you can grab a paper towel and you can kind of put it around the nib like this, just to kind of protect it from splattering places, and then you can just squeeze the converter a little bit. Um, this pen is empty right now, but if I had some ink in here, I could squeeze it gently, and if I was, if I would say it was half full, um, by the time that I squeeze it, oh no, look, there is ink in here, how do you go, how do you like that? Okay, do you see that there? So I've got a little bit of ink there, um, and, you know, there might be some air bubbles, but, oh, see, I'm trying to demonstrate for you, and I just dripped ink all over my desk. <laughs> so you gotta be careful, this is why you keep the paper towel around it, but it's, you can't really see what's going on while you're doing that. You can literally just kind of look and then squeeze like that, and you can see as you squeeze, like, oh, okay, I've squeezed it almost all the way down, and before the ink starts to come out a little bit, I know that I'm almost empty. So be like, okay, I can probably make it through one more meeting, but then I've really gotta be careful. Um, so that's one thing that you can keep in mind there, is you can try doing that, but then of course you might get ink on your fingers, or you might spill it on your desk. So let that be, let me be an example for you of when you live life on the edge as a pen person. Um, it's the same kind of situation when you get into other pens, like this is a, um, uh, a crescent filler, or sorry, I believe they call it an arc filler, um, but a crescent concept here is it's got a, a bar in here with a an, an, uh, bladder, kind of like the Metropolitan has, um, but it's a bladder inside, same kind of boat where you have to kind of squeeze this down. This is the uh, Millennium Arc uh, that uh, we had a little while ago from Visconti. If you have a lever filling pen, this is a Waterman. Um, and if you have a lever filling pen, it's the same kind of boat. There's a piston, or there's a um, uh, bladder inside here, and it's got a lever that you pull up. It's got a bar. It presses a bar down and kind of compresses that. Same kind of situation. If you've got ink partially in here, you just kind of lift that lever a little bit, and ink would start to come out of here if it had ink in it. And then you could kind of gauge about how much you have left. Um, if you have a piston pen, same kind of concept. This is a Montblanc Leo Tolstoy. A lot of piston pens have uh, ink windows for exactly this purpose, so you can see what's going on. But this pen doesn't, so um, it would be the same kind of thing. I would just kind of untwist until I see that the fins on the feed would start to fill up with ink, and I would know, oh, okay, I've got about, uh, I've got about three quarters of a thing left in here. I'm okay. Um, it's gonna, you're gonna have to judge it a little bit based on your pen, because you'll know about how far the travel is on the piston mechanism, or you know how much you need to squeeze on the lever, or whatever it is. Um, and then that's something that you'll, you'll learn as you go, um, once you get to know your pens a little bit better. Um, or, you know, with all this stuff, you can keep in mind, this is all fairly, fairly complicated, right? Like, you're getting pretty nuanced here in terms of managing your pens. The simplest solution <laughs> with all of this, aside from just refilling your pen on a regular basis, which may be a lot to ask depending on who you are, um, the simplest solution that I find is just to carry an extra pen. <laughs> You know, um, and you might get to the point where I am where I have like 20 pens on me uh, because I never want to have, I mean, I carry for a lot of other reasons, but um, I carry a bunch of pens inked up at any one time. And if I'm going somewhere, um, actually it's to the point now when most of the time when I'm travel, unless I know I'm going to be specifically writing a ton when I travel, I, I usually bring like a, like a, 
you know, Visconti traveling ink pot or something like that. Um, but I don't bring whole bottles of ink me with me when I travel because I'll usually bring like 10 pens. And I know that I have ink in all the pens and I'm like, okay, well, this is gonna be my, uh, these are all my backup pens here. <laughs> so anyway, it depends on who you are, um, but the backup pen thing could really help you out.